Tony Collette stars as Laura, a speech therapist living in a peaceful U.S. town whose dark history comes back to haunt her after she's caught up in a tragic restaurant shooting in Netflix's latest drama Pieces of Her, which premiered today. Pieces of Her is a star-studded thrill trip with twists and turns throughout the eight-part series, with Bella Heathcote, David Wenham, Jessica Barton, Omri Hardwick, and Joe Dempsey rounding out the cast. There are so many disclosures during the season that it's difficult to keep track of them all. But don't worry, we've got you covered. We've gone through the finale of Pieces of Her and the significance of Andy's recurring dream. Continue watching to learn everything you need to know about Pieces of Her's conclusion. There are significant storyline spoilers ahead. What occurred at the conclusion of Pieces of Her? In the last episode of Netflix's Pieces of Her, the program wraps up a lot of loose ends, including what happened to Charlie and what cult leader and Andy's father Nick wanted from Laura. Jane after all these years. Jane receives a phone call from Nick, urging him to leave her alone in exchange for her agreeing to give him what he wants and never testify. While they agree to meet, Nick sends Jane a photograph of Andy sleeping at his residence, along with the remark, you should take better care of your daughter. She then sets out to locate her. Meanwhile, back at the home, Nick tells that he discovered Andy after she'd been in a vehicle accident and that Charlie had been brought to the hospital. Nick is chastised by Andy for assaulting her mother before she was born, and he claims he had no idea she was pregnant at the time. Jane enters and passes him a briefcase containing the money, and he immediately begins hunting for something specific. We find that Nick was interested in an audio cassette that came with the money, which had a recording of Nick and Jasper planning the action at the Oslo conference in the hopes of forcing Martin to quit and Jasper to take over as CEO. He intends to use the audio cassette against Jasper, who is running for vice president of the United States, in order to blackmail him into a pardon. Nick then inquires about the summit in Oslo, noting that he did not provide the pistol to Grace. Martin's killer and the wife of a man driven insane by Queller Medicine. As Andy gradually realizes that Nick is to blame for the vehicle accident she was in, she grabs a lantern from the table and attempts to steal Nick's pistol, but he shoots her in the arm, and the cabin they are in catches fire. Jane grabs Nick as he tries to get the tape, and his pistol rolls behind a cabinet. Jane is able to get it before taking Andy out of the flames and pursuing Nick with the intention of killing him. Andy intervenes just as he is about to shoot him and the cops come. Andy is in the police station, speaking with Gordon and confirming Charlie's death. Meanwhile, Jane heads to the police station to testify against Nick, who is being interrogated. When Jasper arrives, Jane informs him that the tape was destroyed in the fire, but she still wants him to find out what Nick is saying in his interview. Before meeting up with Mike, Andy comes home and leaves flowers beside the restaurant where Betsy and Shelley were slain in the mass diner shooting in episode 1. He says he's going to Washington, D.C., to meet with internal affairs about his actions in Andy's case, but that he'd want to see her when he returns. Jane cleans out her closet at home and reveals that when she's irritated, she goes to the beach and thinks to herself, what would Laura do? Andy says she's having trouble coming to grips with the reality of her past, but she's delighted she knows who her father is. Jane lashes out, saying she wishes Andy had never met him, while Andy says he can see she's unhappy because he stopped her from murdering him in the woods and that she has to get her life together. Later in the day, Jane goes to a piano store and becomes tearful after playing for the first time in decades, while Andy returns to painting, drawing her mother and two brothers from a photograph. While doing so, she notices her mother's suitcase and begins watching the footage from the Oslo assassination, only to discover that Grace and Jane had exchanged bags before Grace went on stage. Jane approached Grace at the conference before the debate and informed her that her father was a dominating guy who always got what he wanted and had attempted to terminate her baby by surreptitiously drugging her. According to a flashback, she said she wanted to prevent her father from allowing her daughter to survive while exchanging purses. While Grace's purse had the dye pack, Jane's handbag contained a pistol, which Grace used to murder Martin Queller. While on the phone with Mike, Andy realizes that security had examined Grace's bag when she stepped in. But Jane's bag had not been searched because she had entered with her father. We subsequently observe that Andy's discussions are still being monitored by Jasper Queller's crew. Soon later, Jasper phones Jane and informs her that he will be announced as a presidential candidate's running partner, and that he did listen in on Nick's police interrogation. He claims to have chatted extensively about her, Oslo, and other topics I've never understood you Jane. But we're family, she said. I'm sure I'll be able to keep it quiet. I'll be in contact. He says when she asks what he wants. Andy wakes up the following morning to discover her mother gone. And while she initially believes she's gone, she eventually finds her down by the beach, where the two walk down the sand together. What was Andy's recurring dream's significance? Andy has a recurring dream in which she is hiding in a wooden box while it is snowing outside and she can hear voices screaming for her throughout the series. In the penultimate episode, we find that Andy spent her first few years of life with her mother's friends, Ellie and Clara while Jane was incarcerated. When the army of the changing world, led by Jane's boyfriend Nick, 
kidnapped Professor Maplecroft and held her for ransom after disguising Grace Juno as the academic so she could get access to a panel involving Martin Queller. An altercation ended with Nick slitting the professor's throat before the cops arrived. While they were able to depart the scene, Jane's brother Andrew was shot and Nick refused to take him to the hospital since doing so might notify the authorities. Nick attacked Jane when she tried to take her by herself. Later that evening, Jane used the end of a revolver to knock Nick out and, with the aid of Clara and Ali, drove her brother to the hospital, where he died. She later surrendered to authorities and stated that she would testify against Nick, resulting in her sentence being lowered. Andy was fostered by Ali and Clara while Jane was in prison and they used to play in the woods surrounding their house. She would hide in a cave constructed of twigs and wood there while Clara searched for her. And this is what she remembers from her repeating dream. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to this channel, subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.